man's heart, you know. For so for me, seeing somebody who I knew my whole life in the church to say this, I was like, "What the fuck?" You know what I'm saying? And then he starts to teach a class, and as you know, Buddhism is extremely close, and even more so Christianity than Christianity is to Christianity. Hold on, to Christianity. Hold on. this dude said Buddhism. <laughs> <laughs> Buddhism. <laughs> My man, uh, <laughs> they in the house of the, they praise in the strip club. <laughs> A topic. Well, booty on your feet. Later, make up the difference. Toss and turn in your sleep. Family, I know you miss them. Tripping right from the streets. Starting to get the bitch. Fight for your life to feed. Watch how you turn out winning. This shit just easy. Me. I play the What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Godly Potential YouTube channel. As you can see, the platform is a little different than the typical videos. In this video, I got two of my good homies on the call with me. I don't know where their position on your screen, but first off, we got Jared Russ. Uh, that's he want to show his first and last name, so that's what I'm gonna call him. Yes, sir. What's um, going on, everybody? Yeah, Jared. He uh he has a YouTube channel. If you want to check him out, he does um basically. Reactions or not reactions, uh, reviews on movies. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of shitty right now because of the COVID and no movies coming out in theaters. Exactly. But if you're interested in that thing, as well as this was a guy who went with me to do ayahuasca down at Soul Quest in uh, Orlando. He also <laughs> posted about his um his uh, experience. So definitely head over there and check that out. I'll be sure to put his page and all that stuff in the description. And then we have my boy Steve. Steve is a good friend of both of ours, me and Jared's. He, um, we're all in the military together. Steve is a very, um, I don't know, intelligent brother, like to say the least. Very, very like ahead of his time in the ways of thinking, in my opinion. Um, he's like one of the few people who I can just talk to about any damn thing, really. And he can get it. Like we just, like our brain waves sync up or some shit. But yeah, that's Steve. Man, what's going on, everybody? I'm excited to, to be here uh, in a big way. Like Brian was saying and Jared was saying, you know, we were in the military together, and then you start having these uh, these deep, thought-provoking conversations one way or another. And then Brian was one of the first dudes that, that really, you know, godly potential took it. And then it was one of the first times that I, man, I got humbled pretty quick. It was like, I thought I got this. Damn. You know, one of those, the, the, the student became the master and this little, you know, and it's not, it's not that, right? But it's, it's awesome to be here and see a come full circle, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, before I get into the video, I'm about to give y'all a shameless plug. If you see this shirt right here, you see that? It reads, Manifest Your Dreams. It's a dope ass shirt. I really enjoy it. I really like it. And on the back, it says, Solidify Your Visions and Manifest Your Dreams. So if you feel like this shirt is dope, as much as I feel like it's dope, head over to the Etsy website or my Golly Potential store over on Etsy. The link will be in the description. Not only do we have apparel, we also have, you know, we, we, we got shit for your needs. We got spiritual cleansing sprays and stuff, right? Cleanse all that negativity about your life. We got high vibration oil. You anoint yourself or anything with that, it's going to increase the vibration of it. You can do dream work, astral projection, all that good shit. But that is it. On to basically what's going to be happening in these video series. Um, essentially, what's going to happen is we're going to look at three different questions, three different ideologies, three different topics, and we're basically just going to expound on them, give our opinion on it. I mean, that's how it's going to start now. Later down the line, we might have some totally different, different type of format. But getting right into it, the first question or topic we will be discussing is would you kill 10 people to save one? Keep in mind, before anybody start answering, these are going to be philosophical questions, right? So, again, would you kill 10 people to save one? Who wants to go first? Hmm. Yes, <clears throat> but it comes with, uh, you can't ever take that back, right? So yes, I would, and and the reason I would is uh, I ha I have that belief that deep down, if you see somebody doing something that bad, 
and you don't do anything to stop it, then what makes you any different? Um, you can you can play off the quote, uh, all it takes for evil to triumph is for good men to sit sit by and do nothing, right? Kind of paraphrasing that quote from World War II. Uh, so I, I think I would. It would just really suck, right, to have to do something like that because uh, all life is supposed to be precious. But at the same time, you know, some someone doing something that bad, I, I don't see any other way out. There's no, there's no utopian answer there, right? Uh, That's just my input on it. Yeah. <clears throat> I you know mean, what? Really, go ahead. I mean, really and truly, it's a question of morality. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, good versus bad, good versus evil. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it depends on the situation as to why I would need to kill 10 people for the life of one. You know what I'm saying? It depends on, like, the severity. It pretty much goes hand in hand if, like, would you sacrifice yourself to save a life? You know what I'm saying? Like, depending on, like, that question can be answered many different ways depending on the circumstance. So, or who's the person that you're saving? So, I mean, based off of, I think the best way to answer that, would it would entirely depend on the situation. Like, why would I have to eliminate 10 people for this one person? Who is this one person? You know what I'm saying? Um, and also, Obviously, the loss of life is never a good thing. The, being the cause for that loss of life is never a good thing. But if your heart or your intentions is in the right place because of that, I think that can kind of outweigh, you know what I'm saying, like the negative stigmatism of that situation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm really with, with both of y'all. I mean, yeah, it's all like... It depends on the circumstances. Like, if someone was trying to kill one of my loved ones, if 10 people try to kill my loved ones, oh, without a doubt, I, I, I would take them out, right? But the idea that comes to my head, the analogy or whatever, I think I've heard this before. Maybe you guys have too, but it's like, there's a train going down this track, right? And it has to go either left or right. And on one side, the left-hand side, there's one person. And on the right-hand side, there's 10 people, right? That's what comes to my head. Like, which one would you pick, right? Would you... Would you like, oh, it's only one life opposed to 10? Or would you, well, what did these 10 people do opposed to this one? You know, like, it really is about morality and the circumstances. I mean, but. Yeah. Interesting. So now that we said, kind of, kind of gave our answers, was um, what was kind of unique, or I think what was awesome, was we kind of all gave different answers. Mine was yes, because I automatically assumed I almost went to like that extreme abstract, like you're talking about I'm right here and there's an active shooter, hands down, I'm there all day, right? Jared kind of said, well, you know, it depends on the circumstance. Who is this person? Who, is the, who are these people? And then you kind of use that, that, that train analogy. So it goes to even show really of, of when you ask that question, what different, the context of the situation was different with the answer. The answer was almost the same. Yeah. But the scenarios that we subconsciously, you know, projected onto that question, that that was uh, pretty different, I think, because I was thinking active shooter, basically, right? Like, I'm in school, like, I'm a student now, you know, I'm in campus, and then that worst case scenario. I don't know what y'all were thinking, but that's, I think that's interesting. I went to active shooter. Where, where did you go, Jared, Brian? I mean, like. It's actually very interesting, because you went active shooter, and my mindset went almost like, Let's say we're on an airplane. Let's say we get hijacked by a terrorist. It's 10 of us on this airplane. It's a bomb on the plane. He, and he wants us to crash it into a very populated area. Me as a pilot, will I follow his orders or would I just take us out and go into the ocean? You know what I'm saying? I'm saving not just one, but many lives. As far as like with you, you went with the active shooter mindset. So it's like in that situation, I, I kind of got to think, are you killing 10 people to save one or is self-preservation also coming into a factor with that? Of, I will save lives as a side effect of protecting my own. And it's like, honestly, it's, that's, that's not a wrong answer at all. But I mean, 
that definitely brings a different layer to it, you know, because school shooters, it's a tragic situation. And, and unfortunately, we have to address it because it has sadly become a part of our fucking day to day life. But it's like in that situation, when I protect, am I protecting people or am I protecting myself? And they are just benefiting the byproduct of that for being in the vicinity of myself, so, you know. So when, yeah. When yeah. when I envisioned it, I imagined it's like a not in my classroom, and I have mm. that opportunity. Am I gonna fight or flight? Now, you guys knowing me know I'm not gonna run because I'm an idiot or I'm too proud or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> anti-hero, death, whatever it is, right? Self self preservation in a John Constantine sort of way, right? But that's that's the way I that's the way I envisioned it, where I have an opportunity to get out or to put an end to the threat. Um, and, and the reason I would say, the reason I gave the answer I did where I said, you know, it kind of sucks was because, yeah, I would have to take that life to, um, to, to stop the shooting. Right. But then it's that age old and we'll kind of dive more into our world. It's that age old Batman question of why he won't kill the Joker. Because if I kill the Joker, the amount of killers remains the same, but does it really, but does it really, because if you had killed the Joker, Jason Todd wouldn't have gotten done dirty. He wouldn't have had the red hood problem. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so that's that's the that's that's the way I saw it when, when I went to it. it wasn't yeah. more of self preservation. I have a chance to be, um, you know, somebody what doing like a live feed, running away. Oh my god! Or mm -hmm. or am I gonna engage now? Knowing when I engage, yeah, there's a chance I could also lose my life. But the act of taking a life, right? That's even when you think it's someone in, in her, and you know, someone who stops an active shooter. Oh, it's a hero. I mean, that person for whatever reason going to get death threats they're going to have all sorts of you know the, the the ripple effect of coming out of the limelight and so that's why i answered it the way i did was it was more of a like a not a i have a chance to engage it's i have a chance to run this is true and, and it's like i do agree with what you're saying and it's like when i said that i wasn't saying that that was your thought process but i'm just saying like that it's a thought process to that situation because at the end of the day, all three of us, like Brian said in the initial part of this video, we are all connected by the military. Oh, you know, yeah. we all signed that dotted line to give our life at a blink of an eye for our brothers, our sisters in arm, for our country. You know what I'm saying? And then yeah. to add to another layer of that, we were cops in the military. You know what I'm saying? So it's like on top of signing that dotted line to give your life in a blink, it's like now, it's like you're a cop. Like you're going to be on the the freaking front line regardless, you know? Mm -hmm. So in that situation alone, if push comes to shove, yes, we're going to take lives to preserve one. And you know what I'm saying? So it's like at the, at the, at the bare bones of it, we all are wired to take a life to protect one. I mean. Oh, yeah. Sub, like, sub, like sub, subconsciously, we know that. We didn't think of it this forefront, but by us making that decision to join the military, we all agree that we would. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's really a simple, it's really simple, honestly. It, it, for me, it's a, yes, I would, to say one. But then, just playing devil's advocate, it's like, well, what if Hmm. What if these 10 people were like really like people you knew, like you were cool with them? And what if that one <clears throat> was like someone you was cool with, but you just had a little closer relationship? And let's say, I don't know, they were one of them had like a this one had a bomb, the other one had guns drawn on them. It's like, who would you save, you know, or try to save? Mm -hmm. Like, and that, and, and and the thing with that devil's advocate scenario, right, is on, on a philosophical or on a moral uh, level, there is no right answer. Yeah, it isn't. None of these questions have right yeah, answers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, it's more so the, the last one where it's like you have the ten and the one, right? Because then it's mm -hmm. like you're all oh my. There's so many variables and tangents into that that it's like, man, you know. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, like. Like like you said though, Jerry, like it's it's kind of weird. Well, it's not weird, but we we're gonna have a different outlook on it just being the military. But I feel like a parent would have the same outlook, um, a sibling would have the same outlook, a child would have the everybody would have I, I feel a similar outlook. It's like would you save your loved one 
or would you kill 10 to save your loved one? I mean, yeah, as simple as it get, but I don't want to keep beating this dead horse. <laughs> so go to number two. Yeah. So question number two or yeah, question is, is there a such thing as free will? Hmm. Now, if, <laughs> if you've been watching my channel, I, you you probably already know my take on this, so I'm not even going to go first. Jared, you can go first since I mean, you're ready first. <laughs> like, we all kind of chuckled at this because you know me and you, like, we connected like that. So, like, a lot of our views, a lot of our beliefs, it kind of align with one another. You know, so with me, by asking this question, uh, is there such thing as a free will? It's a pretty straightforward question, but I feel as though as straightforward as it is, it completely attacks religion, specifically yeah. in the vein of Christianity. You know what I'm saying? So when we start looking at Christianity as a religion, we're talking about free will, but Christianity is rooted in the deity of a God that knows what you're going to do before you do it. You know, he knows what you did, what you're going to do. He knows the number of hairs on your head. You know what I'm saying? He knows the number of pores on your skin. So in that situation, if I am being governed by a heavenly body, so to speak, that knows what I'm going to do before I do it, how do I have free will? Because for you to know exactly what I'm going to do, there is no deviation of my thought process. There's no deviation of what I can possibly decide on. Like, you know what I'm going to do. So you know definitively this is what Brian, this is what Seth is going to do. This is what Jared's going to do. Like, they're not going to change. And I don't agree with that. And I feel as though everybody has free will. We have that ability to make a decision whenever we want. I feel as though it changes as we get older. It's almost linked in with maturity and in in like our life experiences and how we look at life. We can make better decisions, but I, to me personally, there is a free will, but I think in order for you to believe in it, I don't think that you could be a very religious person. I think in that aspect, it's going to cause a butting of the hedge. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just this, it's like, it's not going to make sense to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything that was taught to me doesn't make sense. And, like, I'm going to say that and I'm going to let y'all go to now. I like, yeah. going that. I know, so that actually, uh, I'll pick up where you left off. So, growing up in the Catholic Church and going to a Catholic church school for mm -hmm. man, where that was, you know, we had, uh, I want to say we had mass on Wednesdays, and then we had mass on Sundays, and then we had Bible study for kids after mass, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going there five days a week anyway. And, and when I left the church, and before I turned to Eastern philosophy and started studying, you know, uh, in that area, I did have this point in time in high school, in junior high, where it was like, my whole world is upside down, because everything I had learned up to that point was through the eyes of the church. So when I left the church, and I left for reasons, there were there were some scandals and other things going on. But when I when I did, it it was almost as if um, I I didn't understand the the freedom of choice because everything was preordained destiny, right? Where this is you know, and then I started studying other world religions and almost every Judeo religion. Um, so you know, Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Zoroastrianism. They all have these elements where it's, it's like you said, Jared, to, to the amount of pores on your skin. So there's two answers I have for it. There's the um, Western answer. So any Judeo-Christian religion is going to say um, the way I've understood the Bible and the Quran is you have a choice, but your choice has consequences, hence heaven or hell, right? Um, which brings me into the second answer, which is the answer that I agree with the most. And I only gave the first answer because we live in a Christian nation. So, you know, when, when, when talking about society, I have to understand we're a predominantly Christian majority. 
So I'm not saying these other religions don't exist, but the majority is Christian. So that's why I gave that first answer. The second answer is um, I don't think people have as free, much free will as they think. I think they have the illusion of free will. Now with the illusion of free will, they're given, you know, A, B, C, or D, or maybe E, all of the above. However, if you have five options. Is that really free will? Because you're not free to pick option number six, seven, or eight, or to make your own. So it's a predetermined, you know, variety, which is that really free will or not? Um, but I think, uh, I think we do have free will for the most part. If you're not religious, um, even if you're spiritual, you, you, you still have a choice at the end of the day, right? Someone could do something terrible, right? You can come, you can jump me, you can rob me, take all my stuff. Now I have the choice at that point in time. I can retaliate with the law. I can retaliate vigilante, which I mean, that's not you know what I'm saying. <laughs> or, or I can let it go because it's material, right? And, 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 and it'll recover. So you have those options. Now at the end of the day, I'm making a choice. So that's where I say you have the illusion of choice or, or there, there's an illusion of free will. I mean, it really depends on how you want to look at it. You want the, the religious predetermined answer or do you want the individual um, agnostic or atheist answer but we have limited i mean within scope right just like as american citizens are we really free or do we have the illusion of choice and the illusion of freedom i can vote democrat or republican but uh, you know what i mean yeah. that's my take on it anyway yeah. is, is that illusion and it's, it depends on what you believe in and how you see the world so for me I feel like yes and no. Do you have, or <clears throat> the question is, is there such thing as free will? Yes and no. So I feel like the free will was before you incarnated down here, you had free will of choice. You're like, okay, I want to incarnate into this family. I want to have these experience and I want to experience these major events. <clears throat> okay. And my soul's purpose will be this. That's the free will. Then you incarnate. And then those major events are going to happen regardless, right? I believe you can't change that. However, day-to-day -day free will does exist. Like, okay, you can decide to do this, right? Like, you can make these small choices. Like, uh, you can decide to go down this road instead of this one, right? Small things like that. And the reason I say this, I feel like it's already, um, you already decided before you incarnated these major events, is because so when when I was still at uh, South Dakota, a chick at work, uh, y'all know her, uh, Nickerson. She um mm. basically for those you don't know, like she she's she's real spiritual. She was tuned in. She was like native uh native Native American and uh like real spiritual. And uh, one day, I um yeah one day I had a dream right, and she was in there and it was weird. I was handing her a pizza. And I'm like that's so fucking weird. And after that, I was already I was already talking to her about like third eye and like seeing auras and stuff like that. And so I was like, hmm. And so I looked it up. I was like, what 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 could that possibly mean? The interpretation. And the interpretation I found online was basically you're gonna hand her a piece of advice that's gonna be very valuable for her. I'm like, hmm, that kind of makes sense, right? It makes sense. It explains the dream. And so handed to work that night. I was about to tell her before I even could even tell her, she was like, I was like, Yo, I gotta tell you something. She's like, before you tell me. She like had this crazy experience. She was astral projection. She seen her um, spirit guide, and basically, or no disregard, she she had a dream, and I was there, and I was pretty much begging her to take my hand, right? And she said she was. I was like acting all like I was afraid, like I was, something was serious going to happen. And she said she was timid, and eventually she took my hand, and <clears throat> she said her hand just like caught on fire or some some crazy like that happened. She woke up and her whole hand was red. And so then she went into an astral projection and uh, connected to her spirit guide. And her spirit guide was like, he's going to give you a piece of information that's going to be extremely valuable. And she told me this. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? I was like, yo. And then I was like, I just had a dream that this is going to happen. And that's the interpretation I got. <clears throat> and she was like, wow. And so basically I was like, yo, so this shit's already mapped out then. Like the major things is already mapped out. And so that's why I say their free will existed before you came down here. It's like, yeah, you already decided the major events is going to happen. 
And that's right. that's my take on it. I mean, so I'll, I'll kind of now, now that you say it like that, I, I do have another take on free will. Um, another another analogy I kind of <laughs> think of or, or uh, saying that I guess you could say throughout the years was, um, you know, I sit down at a table right at a casino. I don't choose the cards that are dealt to me, but I choose how I play my hand. And that's yeah. kind of it's kind of what you said in another way, I think, right? Where yeah. you don't get to choose the major event, but you get to uh, you you do have your say. Matter of fact, the only power, the only true true power we have as an individual, is how we respond to the external factors in our life that are beyond our control, right? Mm -hmm. So 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 maybe yeah, my answer has changed to to you do have more free will than than what we think. It's just we don't know how we have that free will and how to manifest it and use it appropriate and use it appropriately. Yo, also too, there's a lot of people out there who be having like dreams and visions of people passing away. And then a few days, few weeks, few months later it happens. Something yeah. like. Yeah. And based on what you said, Brian, about your interpretation of free will, it's like with me, by your explanation, it kind of with like, so within myself, I'm, I'm starting to wonder how would we individually define free will, like what falls under free will? Because the way you kind of explained it about how you said that you feel as though free will is what we have before we incarnate in this uh, physical realm. I almost feel as though, like, I would kind of view it as separate. I, I would view it as what you said about how we map out what we're going to experience in life. I would almost group that in part of with what our soul contract could be a part of. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like this is the pact that we made as our soul contract, which would be a whole different topic. That would be a dope topic for us to dive into next time. Yeah. But it's like, as far as that, I feel as though... The soul contract gives you the foundation of the house and the structure of it, the beam to support. And free will is almost like the accessories in the house. You know what I'm saying? Like what kind of chandelier you have. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like so like what kind of furniture, like what kind of um kitchen set you're gonna get. It's like it's all on top of whatever we agreed to before we got here. But free will, I believe, is like the choices that we make in day-to-day -day life, whether it's small or big, you know what I'm saying? Milk or orange juice, or you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, or whether it's like an even deeper kind of question we have within ourselves, like a morality question or whatever kind of question. Like, I feel as though we do have it. And I feel like, I feel like as humans, when we do incarnate, just due to the realm that we are occupying right now, with the with the use of social media and all these other distractions, we can lose sight that we have free will. Yeah. Some of the most liberating times in our lives, and I can't speak for um Sep, I can't speak for you, but it's like obviously from knowing both of y'all we were kind of all raised religiously you know what i'm saying and 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 different religious sectors i would well I not at all but yeah. okay well pretty much me and sep so i know for me one of the most liberating things was when i developed my own mind when i realized that my mind is mine and i'm not being told what to think and i started <laughs> to question what was being told to me like that was so liberating to me that was like I have free will of my own mind to challenge ideas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like challenge theories and think deeper and it not to be a sin. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because like Sep can attest to this. Like when you young man, like you don't think for yourself. You think whatever your parents tell you to think and whatever the church tell you to think. But the second you are able to liberate yourself from that plug uh <laughs> yeah. you know what i'm saying like you can pretty much you get this rush like yo like if i can free myself from that i can free myself from anything i can think however i want to think you know what i'm saying nobody is in charge of my own mental space but me and that's why i think we do have free will but 
it almost has to be relearned. Yeah. As you grow older, I believe. I feel like once, so for us, the way you said it, relearn. Uh, I, I would like to change relearn to once you're unprogrammed from society's norms. Yeah, that's like, good. Yeah, perfect. That cookie cutter mentality. We all, all three of us, broke free at different points. So you kind of gotta, you broke free from everything and the illusion that you thought was reality. And and now you have to put together the broken pieces of what was. Because the reason I started having beef, one of the first reasons was in second or third grade. And it was um, after Bible study. So or it was after mass before Bible study. You know, there's like that little brunch with the donuts and the finger foods for the parents. Yeah. Well, the kids go to Bible study for that extra hour. <laughs> and in between, there were some homeless people because, you know, uh, the, the mass was here. And then you kind of had to go like across a parking lot to the, where the Sunday school was. And so I had said, like, oh, hey, why don't we invite them over, you know? And the answer I had gotten was, well, they made their choices. These people made their choices. And, you know, this is me in second or third grade, whichever it was. And I said, uh, right, but in order to be like Christ, it doesn't matter the choices they made. We're supposed to do the right thing. They look hungry and we have all this food. Oh, well, you don't understand. You know, they kind of made their choices. They, 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 and then I couldn't understand that. So then I get mad, right? This is little, I, I still got mad back then. <laughs> I get mad and I said, how, how clearly you don't know the scripture. Do you know who Mary of Magdalene was? Do you know all of the apostles? The disciples, they were terrible people. They were terrible sinners. They were frauds, thieves, adulterers. Like, come on, who are we? It doesn't matter at the end of the day. And, and you know, this was a little me. So I, I was getting frustrated. And that's really when I started having issues with the church. All I understood was there's someone there that is in a lesser circumstance and I have the ability with the surplus of, of my, of what I have in my life that we should at least break them off some. And it was almost, well, because they're homeless and because they might be, you know, on drugs or drunk or whatever, 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 they made their choice. You're a little boy, be quiet. You don't know any better. And, and, and so that whole free will, once you start thinking and how liberating it, you know, it is because, mm -hmm. you know, this is a second and third grade by, by seventh, eighth grade, I was done. I mean, I was tapped out where I'm like, ah, this is, this is crap. This is politics. This is not, this doesn't make sense. They don't, they're not talking about, they're, they're not walking the talk. They're just talking. Yeah. You know. but, but also, getting off track, but yes, Jared, I know what you meant. The liberation mindset. <laughs> because we were indoctrinated. We weren't just indoctrinated with the military. We were indoctrinated with that religion because we, it was all we knew. It was just, I grew mm -hmm. up knowing exactly. about Old Testament because my pre-K was at a Catholic school. I mean, mm -hmm. right so I went on that tangent, but I know exactly what you mean. My bad, Brian. My bad, Brian. <laughs> oh, no, it's all good, dude. <laughs> all good. Another thing I would say is um, <clears throat> I feel like free will is also um, a privilege or something you got to attain. Because most people today, let's be honest, they're governed by their animal body. Like, for real. They act off impulses. Whatever emotion they get, they act it out. Whatever cravings, whether it's sexual, um, hunger, um, type of addictions, they act it out. Like, they have no control. They have no will. They can't will something else to be. And so they don't really experience willpower like that. Or, or free will, I should say. Yeah. Instant gratification. Mm -hmm. and that's and that's just for the ego and the animal body so it's like really is there, is there free will there especially if someone like addicted to some and they can't give it up and let's say everybody had free will it's like well you have a choice just give it up no they they literally can't it takes i mean well at that point internal demon or whatever they want to battle to overcome that addiction you know what i'm saying it's like you still have that free will but just because you have free will, I don't mean it's gonna be easy, nor is it gonna be simple. You know what I'm saying? Like you still have to put forth that effort, that strength, that fight to overcome it. But and it's like and it's like back to what I was saying with like the liberating feeling of um coming to terms of like you know free will and like liberating your mind. I can kind of connect it with you, Brian. Like, I mean, case in point. When me and you went to our ayahuasca journey, you know what I'm saying? And we had our journey together. Like, 
do you remember the one thing that you say you really pulled from it? Uh, I'm, probably, I'm, I'm probably wording this question wrong to like get you to say what I want you to oh, say. Basically, just stop caring what other people thought. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. And that is a level of liberating yourself from your old self. You know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. had that free will to be like, yo, like why am I stuck in my head caring what other people say? Like I have the free will to do whatever the hell Brian wants to do. You know what I'm saying? And you know how liberating that was for you. Like, yo, this is nice. I'm no longer living in my head. I'm no longer living in my ego, <clears throat> questioning and wondering what people are thinking about myself. Like I'm going to live me for me. If I want to do it, I'm going to do it. If I want to have fucking breakfast for dinner, I'm going to do it. Yeah. I want to have dinner for breakfast. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's just, it's March just the beat of your own drum, man. Huh? Marching to the beat of your own drum. Not exactly. Feeling. You know what I'm saying? And it, it sounds so elementary, but so many people, we walk around in our own heads that we don't realize that we have free will. We are prisoners to ourselves. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. and it's not till you fully realize, like, I don't have to be like this or why am I like this that you really come out of and then you spread your wings like a freaking butterfly. You take off. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was, that was perfect. I ain't got nothing else to add. I don't know how you find, to piggyback off Jared, no, for real, I don't know how you, yeah, that, I'm good on that one because I don't know how you follow that up, man. Just, uh, man just. All right. <laughs> so, <clears throat> The third one, the third question, third and final is, is there such, no, that's not it. How do you know that God exists or doesn't exist? I'll go first. So how do I know that God exists? Well, let's just get rid of the term God for me and I'm just use the creator or the all or the divine. I mean, use those three interchangeably. Well, how can there be a creation without a creator? I don't think there can be, right? You hear this thing like the Big Bang. I do believe that that happened at a certain point, but I believe that there was a creator first who created this reality that, that, that we're seeing. Now, whether that's a, a frequency, uh, just a, a huge mind, like the same mind we have, or if it's, I don't know, some humanoid figure. I don't know all that. However, I also believe that God exists because you have it in throughout creation. You have um, sacred geometry, right? You have, um, what, what is it? You you have these 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 different patterns throughout nature that that shows you that everything is pretty much intricate and it is through mathematics that it was created. And how could something random create that? You know, how can just a huge explosion create just all of this creation? Like like that's that that's enough for me to know that God does exist, and I also believe that as within so without and as above so below okay so the fact that we have a mind and our mind is infinite we can imagine anything you can literally close your eyes and imagine infinity right and that's on the internal level so it has to be external as well so if we have a uh, a great mind down here on the, on this universe on this on this this uh, microcosm, there has to be the same in the macrocosm. And the other part of the question, um, how do you know that God doesn't exist? Um, I believe that it does. Yeah, I mean, I pretty much, I'm right there with you. I mean, to take away the word God and use the word creator, like, yeah, because I wouldn't look at it as a single entity as like how religious, how like different religious sects may view a God or what a God may be. 
but I would definitely use the word creator, like what you did. Like, if people really took a second, just a second, and stop in life and really observe, you know, like we all heard the saying, stop and smell the roses, you know what I'm saying? Stop and sniff the coffee or whatever have you. you know, if people really took a second to stop and take a moment and just take in just that, the moment, they would realize just how perfectly designed everything is. You know what I'm saying? And science likes to use the word evolution. That's cool, fine, and dandy. There is a place for science in the physical world. You know what I'm saying? Not really the metaphysical, but definitely the physical world. But evolution is... That explains maybe... 0.001% of what's going on. Like, we're living on a planet that is tailor-made for our biome with living vegetation that gives us oxygen, takes in our byproduct, manufactures it, and gives us back. You know what I'm saying? The very thing that we need to survive. And it's just like, if people not only just look at the physical side of things and how things like that really affect us and how it's just so magnificently in line, also look at life. You can go through the most amazing situation in your life, the most biggest milestone. You can go through the lowest times in your life, you know, where you're feeling really down and out, depressed, like how the hell did I get here? At the end of the day, if you can somehow peek through the pain or the happiness, you can see there is a method to that madness. Like every pain has a story. Every happiness has a reason. You know what I'm saying? Like everything, like everything has a purpose, you know, and like trials and tribulations can be opening a door for something else. It's teaching you something else to prepare you for another stage of your life. If this didn't happen, you would have never been ready for this. You know what I'm saying? Or just vice versa. Like, I say within like the past maybe year and a half, I've started to realize that like every situation in life, instead of being wrapped up in like, oh man, this sucks. Oh man, this sucks. You know what I'm saying? Oh oh, man, this is cool as hell. I finally got what I've been hoping for. Really look at it and you will see a bigger picture. Everything in life has a reason. Everything in life happens in order, sequential order. Me and you, Brian, we've had conversations about this. You know what I'm saying? Like where I'm at today, I would not have been here today if me and you didn't have that conversation that led us going to ayahuasca. You know what I'm saying? And it was just like everything, it's a stepping stool going to wherever you're going in life and like just by design that perfect design something had to create that that's not happening by chance i'm a firm believer and i tell a lot of people i do not i absolutely do not believe in the word coincidence coincidence is a fallacy that i do not believe in everything happens for a reason for a reason bro you know what that term comes from coincidence what's up it comes from mathematics when two angles coincide. That's where hmm. that term comes from. When two angles Teach perfectly me my work. brother. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, I do not believe in that word. Not one bit, man. Like, not at all. Like, that's just some, that's, that's our, like, that's our physical humanly mind trying to, ex- trying to explain away something that can't be explained. And it's like, everything happens for a reason. Everything, like if I swear to you, like if if I can impart that gift on the world, if people would just stop and really look at shit, they would see how this big ass puzzle is actually fitting together within their life. And I think most people do experience that too. Once they go through some shit and then they look back on it, it's like, damn, I was in the right place at the right time. Damn, I met this yeah. person for a reason. But. Mm-hmm. I know you're just gonna speak, Steve, so you can go ahead. So I'm gonna work it backwards, okay? So the second part to the question is why God doesn't exist. I'm gonna answer that first, and then I'm gonna go to why it, why he may or may not, or why he may. So 
the reason he doesn't exist. Um, I, I can understand why a lot of people to uh, maybe include myself. I don't really believe and kind of you guys alluded to it a little bit. God, right? To me, when I see God because of studying world religions and mythologies, I see a Judeo-Christian term. So I, I try not to use that term. So then creator, right? We say creator. And, and so it's one of those things where, you know, the creator is all knowing and the creator is all loving and all this great stuff. But then I don't understand the hell. I don't understand the crap that all three of us have seen before the military, during the military and after. I don't understand it because if you're all knowing and all loving, because in theory, right? If, if you're the all father, right, as you would say for Norse people or for Odin, you're the all father as someone who's a father and, and Brian, you may as well be your father figure, right? If you're all knowing and, 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 and just like all three of us, we know that stove or that oven is hot as hell. So out of love and knowing to, to, to save our children from that pain, we will actually get mad at them or get irritated or lash out in an irate way out of fear. And we'll say, no, no, no. Because if, if you do that, now you can make the argument that, well, hey, God did do that because see the Ten Commandments, see Leviticus, right? So, so you can make that argument. But, um, you know, for, for, for the people that want to say he doesn't exist, I, I can understand why because there's so much ugly. I don't understand it. And, and now you could say, well, see Garden of Eden, right? We were kicked out. We were, well, yeah, sure. But, but what does that have to do with us? We weren't there. Like, damn, I got to pay the price to some people that I never even met. You know, so so that's why I, I could see the argument that he doesn't exist. There's too much ugly. And if there, and, and, and you know, another reason, and I'm going to go more on a, on a historical answer with this, but you study world religions and world mythologies. And then I started realizing, man, the Aztecs had similar stories as the Egyptians. So then you take away the names and then you just look at the story and the motif or the plot, if you will. And it's basically always along the same lines of, creator, um, the creator's opposition, and then the lineage, where the creator will have a son or two sons in the case of Thor and, and Loki, right? Um, or with the Aztecs, there was the twins. And, and one is good and one is evil. And so if God is all-knowing and we're all created in God's image, then wouldn't, I mean, the, the terrible people, the murderers, the rapists, every god-awful, extreme, radical person on the planet was ever done something just terrible, right? It's hard for me to believe that that's part of a plan. It's hard for me to believe that people have to be killed. People have to witness homicide. People have to witness rape. People have to partake in all of this crap, right? And, and, and so that's where I say it's hard for it. Now, on the flip side, you know, working back, I could see where you look at everything. And like you said, you know, Jared was talking about we live on this planet that's created perfectly for us. And we're just a sack of skin, meat, and water. And we have this special brain that makes us different from, from, from chimpanzees, from ravens, from dolphins. And I named those animals because those are the animals we consider, you know, least intelligent to, to us, or they come second to us. And, and, and so, you know, I, I can see that because at the same time, you take a step back, the Big Bang happened. And because you can't argue dinosaurs didn't exist, there's fossils to prove it, right? So we've been, this planet has been around for thousands, millions, millions, and then this had to happen, and then this had to happen, and then if this had happened, this wouldn't have happened. And you know, so many perfect things have to fall into place for the moment we're in now. I mean, I had to get denied orders twice to my not in order to even come across y'all. And then even then, I had to get stationed at the right duty station at the right time to the right flight. And, and I didn't even meet Jared until about a year after being at Ellsworth. I met Elijah and Janae before I, I knew Jared. And, and, and so it's like, wow, <clears throat> how many things had to happen for today to happen? That, you really, and, and I call it this effect that we're talking about, I call it the statistical anomaly effect, where it's like, dude, there is no way all of this fell into place. All of this had to fall into place in order to be where we are now or where I am now. This is God's will, right? Because there's no law, but there's no other logical explanation. I mean, you just heard me make all these reasons for why God doesn't exist or the creator or organized religion. 
you know, but I've been studying world, you know, world religion and mythology for the last 10 years on my own as a hobby. And one of the things I found, regardless of, of the chronological time order of which religion came first, according to BC, AD, you know, it doesn't matter. The story is the same. Yeah. So maybe throughout the years, you know, through the grapevine, it got diluted, but the principle is still the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that that's actually a great message from the same one creator. Is it not a statistical anomaly in itself? It's almost paradoxical or an oxymoron where, you know, now I feel like an idiot answering my own, you know, my first answer is, is, is conflicting my second answer. So, so you know, I, 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 my answer, I don't believe in, in what we call God um, in the Western world. I, I, I believe more in re- reincarnation in Buddhism. So, so I don't really believe in a God per se. To me, God or the creator is our subconscious. That voice you hear in your head, for which whatever reason, this voice has a unique voice in your head. My subconscious voice is not the same as yours. Unless we all just have Mufasa from James Earl Jones as our subconscious. <laughs> Remember. <laughs> Remember. But, I got Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> No, but um, <laughs> seriously though, how do we all have this subconscious voice that we each, each of us assigns our our own unique devil and shoulder with our, their own voices that is different from the voice that we imagine is our own? Yeah, and that's is the that thing about it. It's like an anomaly in itself. What are the odds that that all of this makes sense? But none of that does. I mean, another I thing too with religion is how many times it's been re- rewritten. How many times people, because you know what, regardless of whether you're religious or not, the one thing that I will not care to argue with anyone, because if you want to argue this, I just simply say you're illiterate and you don't know how to read, is, is throughout the years, more so in the recent years, um, last couple hundred, maybe thousand years, Religion has definitely had an identity and it's had an agenda and it's had politics to go with it. Otherwise America would have never happened, right? For the freedom of religion to escape the church of England. So, so that's another problem I have with religion is throughout the years, it has been, you know, shifted or slightly modified to fit a nation or a kingdom's agenda. So that, that was my, my final issue. But anyways, my bad, Jared. I, I kind of cut you off a second ago before I lost you. Nah, you good. Like, I, I was trying to fit it in. Like, I think you'll be done, and you'll start back up like a lawnmower. <laughs> that was my fault. <laughs> but, um, I mean, but, yeah, I'm, I, I'm with you. Like, when I was taking classes, like, back in college, like, one of my favorite classes was World Religions. And, you know, and we tackled all of the big religions, Eastern and Western, and it was such an enlightening class, not just because of the subject matter, but because of the teacher. The teacher himself was a guy who I grew up with in my church, and he was a minister. You know what I'm saying? So I'm was, so he was, in. He was our age? Um, he's about, he's probably about five, seven years older than us. So, so older brother age for us. Yeah, pretty much. So when I walked to the class and he saw me, like, you know, he was like, yo, you know, and like we had, you know, he knew me. I knew him. I knew he was a Baptist preacher, but he's teaching world religion. And he prefaced it, the class by saying like, look, obviously I was raised Christian, Baptist to be exact, but he was like, at the end of the day, none of us fucking know. You know what I'm saying? And and he was like, you're going to learn some things in here that's really going to make you question what you were brought up being taught. You know, for, so for me, seeing somebody who I knew my whole life in the church to say this, I was like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? And then he starts to teach a class. And as you know, Buddhism is extremely close and even more so Christianity than Christianity is to Christianity. Hold on. To Christianity. Hold on. This dude said Buddhism. <laughs> <laughs> Buddhism. <laughs> My bad. Uh, they praise in the house of the they praise in the strip club. <laughs> A topic. Well, Buddhism. But you know, whatever, man. I'm yeah, from the yeah. South, man. We talk crazy down here. But Hearing that, 
not with a people like not to get off topic, but hearing him talk about that, I was like, yo, this actually does really line up with like a lot of things that I didn't know. You know, us like us over here in the states, we hear that we picture a fat man smiling, yeah. rubbing his stomach, but it's a lot deeper than that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So as far as like a god, again, I don't believe it as it being a singular figure. I'm with you, except when you say that it has something to do with that voice in your head, that voice that we all have, just that, you know, that guiding light that steers us right and wrong. Ooh, and again, ooh, ooh, ooh. I got to pause you, or darkness, or the guiding yeah, that darkness, too. right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah, so like that too, and it's like, this will be, it, this is going to be a good conversation going forward, because this conversation can dive into the metaphysical, which is what me and Brian love to really talk about. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I get what you're saying about the messed up stuff on earth and stuff like that. So I'm not really going to go into it because it's going to go off topic. So maybe sure. our next conversation can really like dive into that. Yeah. But how you brought up how, you know, you got denied orders and then you met us. That's what happened to me. I joined the military. I joined the military. January of 2010. Um, at that time, basic training was what? Eight weeks? So I should have been graduating. I technically should have been graduating like around my birthday. So like around March 13th. Like eight and a half weeks. I bombed my PT test like two or three times. So I was held back in basic training until I could pass my run. Push-ups, I could do freaking 70 of them. Sit-ups, I could do 60 of them. Waist, I was like 31 inches. It was that goddamn run. I know. We did a PT test at Ellsworth. <laughs> yeah, because that freaking and, <laughs> and back in 2010, we had to run a mile and a half in 11 minutes and 57 seconds. I was always coming in at like 12, 15. So <laughs> it was like... I was struggling. I was struggling. After literally about three, three and a half weeks, I finally passed this and I graduate from basic training and I go into tech school. By the time I graduate tech school, lo and behold, who do I meet? Jeanette. Jeanette. We go to Korea together. You know what I'm saying? We go to Korea together. My follow-on base is Guam. Her follow-on base is... Tinker, Oklahoma City. Obviously, worlds apart. What happens again in freaking Korea? That goddamn run. I'm freaking struggling with the goddamn PT test. I lose my orders and I lose Guam and I go to South Dakota. Eight hours away from Oklahoma City. So it was like everything happened for a reason. During that time, I didn't see it. I was just like, this fucking sucks. All of my friends are graduating, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's graduating, like, pretty much basic training. I'm stuck here by myself. Mm -hmm. It sucks seeing my boys walk the stage and pretty much walk the freaking thing, and I'm sitting here. Oh, it sucks that I lost my follow-on base, not realizing all of this shit was setting me up to have my family. Mm -hmm. It was setting me up to meet y'all. You know what I'm saying? It was setting me up to meet the Steps, the Bryans of the world. You know what I'm what, saying? What would a Penny's middle name been? <laughs> it, exactly you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah, if no, I would have right. passed my PT test as I was supposed to in basic training I would have never crossed paths with y'all ever you know yeah. and this shit goes back to the soul contract so is God the soul contracts you know what I'm saying you know the things that we have no prior knowledge of whatever we did before we reincarnated here and we're just playing out the movie script but since we don't have a way of knowing that we label it as God, like, I don't know, but it's, yeah. it's, no, it's definitely like an interesting concept. So, so that labeling, labeling, right? Yeah. You don't, you, 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 yeah. So it's like, even though we feel as though we just met ourselves now, that's not the truth. Before we incarnated, we all was sitting around like, yo, like how we finna meet up and this, that, and the third. And I imagine we're at like an airport terminal, right? Like, oh, yeah. you got delayed too? Your flight got delayed? Where? No. Yeah. Hold on. And we, yeah, and we all live the different, and it's like we all, we all have our own soul contracts. And prior to us incarnating here, we all been, we all been a part of each other's life before, mm -hmm. but we were different roles. 
You know what I'm saying? Seth was probably my biological brother. You know what I'm saying? Brian probably was. You know what I'm saying? It 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 it, it, it could be anything. We all played different roles to each other. So, I mean, so what was Brian gonna say? Brian Brian was ready. Brian was ready. Yeah, yeah definitely on. get that. I just got some. I don't know. Some's over here right now. I just felt some weird shit in my ear. It was I'm talking about the how we all but, knew each other. Yeah. Like, I'm, so, late <laughs> I'm actually in the process of writing a book right now. And I'm talking about a process before I incarnated. And this is just all just imagination. And that's that's pretty much what I wrote down. I was like, look, it's almost like a big ass terminal we went to, and all the people who incarnated in the same age group, your soul family, all in the same terminal, because y'all finna incarnate in a similar time. And that's pretty much what happened. We were just communicating with each other until it was time to pretty much book your flight and just come down into the vessel you finna be brought up in. So, yeah. Dude, so, and so yeah, the same, similar with me with the military. Bro, I wanted to go open mechanical. I wanted to be a mechanic outside fixing on planes. And then some shit happened. They robbed us at work. And I was like, fuck this. And I left. Next, The next week I left. And then I went through basic. And I was the, oh, no. Just me and this other chick, the only two people who didn't get the fucking, the base we wanted on our dream sheet. Everybody else, every single other person went to the place they wanted to go. Except for me and this one chick. So, yeah, you're absolutely right on that. I, I kind of want to backtrack to what Jared was saying when I talked about yeah. labeling. You were talking about, uh, you, you said something along the lines, and I'm just paraphrasing. You said something along the lines of, we don't know what it is, so we just put it on God, right? Mm -hmm. And, and I wanna, I'm not taking aims. I'm just speaking off of what I know. That is how most of the religion and beliefs was based off of the Pacific Islanders, more so Hawaii. There was supernatural events like volcanoes, right, erupting. Yeah. And and they couldn't explain this. So then they 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 create these stories about the gods, and this god is upset, and the volcano's erupting because she's crying into the ocean because she's sad about her fallen lover. And and that is based off of one of the volcanoes. I can't, I want to say it's off Big Island. Um, but, but, you know, regardless, cause I did the, the tourist crap and, and that's how I, yeah. knew that story. And, and it just, it, you know, and it stuck with me cause it, it was like, you know, hmm, there really are some things with, with, with ancient religion and ancient philosophy, you know, BC religion, right? Before Christ and, and the height of Islam and all that Judeo-Christian Zoroastrianism, um, throughout the different points in the world, you know, these, the hurricanes, avalanches, floods. Mm -hmm. these um mother nature's you know supernatural anomalies whatever you want to call it natural disasters couldn't be explained so then there was elaborate stories created because what's what's a good way to to understand something or, or explain something you don't understand well i don't know why this is happening and this is happening but if i imagine that there's a big person like me but only bigger they look like me they sound like me, they walk like me, they talk like me, but only bigger. And they're really in control. So because they pissed off this person or that deity, they're having a battle and this and that. Long story short, that's why it's raining. Go make a sacrifice. Yeah. Right. All right. And this is that old, 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 thousands and thousands of years ago mentality. So when you talk about labeling, I don't know what this is. I don't know. But, you know, it's uncomfortable. But I have to know what it is, especially since we live in the age of information, where most things that we want to know, we can find out, you know, like that. Well, I don't know. I don't know, God. And so with the labeling, um, I think that's definitely interesting, too, because there is truth to it. A lot of ancient religions and mythologies, yeah. um, you know, something as simple as a supernatural disaster was explained via gods having beef with one another. Right. Yeah, because it's like I feel as though with us being human, humans, we have this innate hunger to try to explain away stuff with our humanly mind. This is why we see a lot of debates between people rooted in spirituality and science. You know what I'm saying? Which again, which I said before earlier in this uh podcast, is like there is space for both. 
science is not useless. Science is definitely important in different, you know, in certain aspects, but there also is a space reserved for spirituality as well. And not everything can be debunked with science. You know what I'm saying? And for whatever reason, human nature, we have to cling on to what can we like how can we explain this away through textbook knowledge you know and that's not that's not the way to go about life you know what i'm saying it keeps you in a very boxed in life style and it goes back to what i said you're not liberating your mind because your mind is confined to pretty much what you've been taught your entire life yeah and and i agree with that because it's almost like like a even over the last thousand years or so, maybe since yeah. the uh, industrial revolution, right? We, we've kind of like, we want everything black and white, black and white, black and white, definitive, definitive. Mm-hmm. It's almost to the point now where we can't accept, uh, hey, I may not know. Yeah. I don't know. Exactly. Like, look at the sheer number of people who you bring up the word aliens and they're looking at you like, ha, 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 I miss, I'm watching so much movies. Like yep. the sheer, like to me, and it's like, it's not, it's not a slight at people, but and to me, it's like the sheer ignorance of a person to think that we are the only living intelligent beings in a universe. How oh, selfish and self-absorbed do you have to be? I, I don't, you know, the, you, you know, the Go government ahead. just released, uh, just made, what files on they pretty much yeah. unclassified them yeah, yeah i've seen that yeah well, so what are you saying Zip? well to answer jared the reason i think why people do that because you're right brian they did just declassify all that it's been out there man i i have this is a whole nother we could table this and make a whole nother video for that too but uh, uh you know people it's a lot easier jared like you said, you say it's the sheer ignorance, right? To think, mm-hmm. I, I, I disagree. I don't think it's the sheer ignorance. I think it's what you just said, right? So I'm just, I'm, I'm, the other, I'm the opposition. But what you just said to me is so nerve wracking to my illusion of what I think I know because I grew up in one train of thought or I grew up only believing in Christianity or whatever it is. But what you said is so unsettling. It may shake the foundation what I believe in as an individual. Yo. Because of that, you're fucking crazy. I don't because want I can't to. Be wrong. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't want to interrupt. I'm sorry, but I got to put this out there. Yeah. Dude, if I was by you right now, it'd be a big ass bro hug. That yeah, is yeah. exactly yeah. Yeah. how I feel. <laughs> I feel as though a lot of people, they laugh off aliens, they laugh off. Um, ghost spirits because the very thought of it will shake them to their fundamental core you know what i'm saying and i think that is the reason why people always ask well if there's aliens why does the government not just divulge it and it's because of that thought process oh it would be so many millennium programming you that they know if they give you the truth it will be earth shattering. Well, so now, now I just want to play that clip from Men in Black where he's talking to Will. I know you're talking about when they on the bench. 15 minutes ago, or what is it? 1,500 years ago, everyone knew the earth was the center of the universe. Da da da. Five minutes ago, you knew alien life forms did not exist. And he kind of, and, and it was like a, what he did was low key and subtle and slick. <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, that was a huge, I don't want to say litmus test, but nothing comes to words because it, it's a movie, right? It's not real yeah. and, and so on. So, But just like you said, that, 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 that message cannot be more true. Insert Tommy Lee to, to Will Smith on the bench, and that would have fit in perfectly because it, it really does shake people to the core because it's almost like this. Well, you know, let's just, you know, I'm seventh generation Baptist since yeah. you know, the 1800s, whatever. And and even say I don't care, right? I'm 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 this many generations, and 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 then all of a sudden, Men in Black comes out the woodworks and says, "Hey, surprise, we're real." Remember how like you guys got a bunch of crazy technology, in in a 20 year time frame that didn't exist for 200 years, 
So mm -hmm. the reason being was because, you know, we decided to say, let it go, whatever. There's aliens. Imagine being that seventh generation Baptist or, or, or just being so deep in any indoctrination with any religion. I don't want to pick on Baptist. So any religion, right? Where you're almost pompous and radical to a certain extent, actually getting that at once and just, I mean, it's almost like a knee jerk reaction. There's no, there's no, there's no easing into it. There's no foreplay. There's no easy. It's just straight up, bam. And, and that's, Bro, you can, I mean, that's why it doesn't exist. That's why that conversation with Tommy Lee happened to Will Smith in that movie was like, hey, before you take the red pill, think about it. Cause uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You just call a bunch mm -hmm. of crazy. I'm gonna leave you on this porch for 12 hours. Don't think too hard. Bro, hard. Bro, that applies to so many things. Like not just religion. You can apply that to the whole concept of generations before us thought that if you go to college and get a degree, you will be good. You know what I'm saying? You, you yeah. will be set. And then you're born into this and in this this century, this this day and age, you're like, like, that shit is not true. And I'm pretty sure the generation before us, like our parents, probably probably discovered that shit the hard way. You know what I'm saying? Like they just realized, boom, like, I still can't find a fucking job with this. And their whole reality was just shattered. Some of them accept it, some of them don't. But like to go way back. <laughs> so I said the whole thing of um, as above, so below, right? Yep. Or as within, so without. Like the thought process came when the ideas came. So if you got a, a woman who, who's birthing a child, right? That's as below. Like what is the as above um, equivalent or whatever the fucking word is? <laughs> what, what, is what is what is that above, right? Is is that the universe? And because it's because in the womb, I'm pretty sure it's just double blackness. You know what I'm saying? There's no light coming in, very little. So I'm like, is that the cosmos represented down here? And then just just to throw it out there, and then the whole saying of um, does, go back to the question: Does God exist? Right? There's a thing called well, I actually have right here. So this is a cosmic beacon, right? Supposedly, it connects you to your divine parents. Now, divine parents are two gods that came together, or more than, it could be one or more. They're pretty much, or two or more. They came together to create your soul. They say the creator didn't create your soul. The creator created those gods, and then those gods came together and created your soul, pretty much. So with that said, like, I don't even know what I was going to go with that. To be honest, I just want to throw it out there. <laughs> what, what the wrong lines of does, does he exist or not? I mean, so what's, what's, I'll, I'll go from there. What's funny is there's actually a, in Greek mythology, they talk about the world before, and, and you know, I'm paraphrasing now because I don't remember the exact isms or verbatim, but it was um, humans used to be born with two heads, four arms, and four feet. Hmm. And then the Titans, it wasn't the gods, it might have been the Titans, said the humans are too strong in this way. So let's strike them in half. And now you have one head with two arms and two legs. And your whole purpose on this existence of Earth is to find your other half. From before yeah. when the gods had, had ripped us apart. So it's kind of I funny if you had told that story when there's a Greek mythology explanation for it that predates you know, anything biblical from the Western world, from the Western world. That right there just brings up like twin flames and like soulmates. Well, yeah, yeah. And we had kind of talked about that right? offline the other day, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if it's you, it's just divided in two. So you're going to be mirroring each other, you know what I'm saying? So if but you're looking you, for but, them, until y'all come together, so to speak, you're not complete. But Greek aspect, it was two separate heads. So that's why I see it as two separate trains of thought where you need okay. your... You need your balance, right? I feel like what the Greeks did to us is, you know, Thanos' little knife where he balances and says perfectly balanced. The Greek gods broke that in half. Mm -hmm. And you got to find that other half of your knife to make it perfect. That, that's just my personal take on it and my interpretation. That's just how I, that's just how I. What else I want to say about the other side of the coin? Like, if, how do you, or how do you prove, or whatever question was, that God doesn't exist? 
like people would think, well, how do you explain all this negativity, all this fucked up shit that happens here? Well, my take on it is, and I actually shared with a video to Jared like a few a few weeks or months ago about this guy. He's pretty much explaining that Earth is just another dimension of hell. That's how you experience all this hellish shit that goes on. You can experience every every hideous act you can experience on Earth. And that would explain to me why this shit is allowed, this shit happening, because we're just in a dimension of hell. And that would explain why all this negative fucked up shit happened. And then somebody would say, well, how can God or the creator let this happen? Well, I also think that God's not concerned about what the fuck we're doing down here. It's no different than us worrying about what ants are doing, you know? It's just way down the line, right? Maybe to us, archangels and stuff, the, the ones that work with the creator, let's say that they're to an ant, they're like a wasp or something or a bee, right? They're more closer to them. That doesn't mean that they're fucking, they're, they're worried about them, but they can get their attention more easily than, than, than pretty much they can get the attention of, let's say, a human. So an ant can get the attention of like a wasp or a bee more than it could to a human. And that's like, um, us, we can get our, we can get the attention of like an archangel or something or an angelic being or any other spirit for that matter than we can the creator. Yeah. And that's what I was talking about earlier when I said, I didn't want to go down that path because that was a whole different conversation, but that's what I was alluding to, Brian, about mm -hmm. the whole, like, there are levels or stages to hell. Earth is one of them. That's why you see so much effed up stuff. That's why you see school shootings. That's why you see these random acts of violence that, that appears to be just out of the ordinary or where did that come from? You know what I'm saying? It's like, but in the same vein, you can see the beauty of life. You can see a child being born. You can hear a child's laughter. You know what I'm saying? You can experience true love. You know what I'm saying? Your first kiss. Like, yeah, it's not the worst of hells because you are going to have some good but you also have to deal with some bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, with all the good you get, you're going to have to deal with some hurt as well. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Whether it's the shit you see on the news or the loss of a loved one. At the end of the day, it's all just a stepping stone. It's, it's all meant to teach you a lesson. It's all just you are iron that's being forged by fire right now. And this fire is this hellish state that we're in. You know, it's constantly beating you away forming you into what you really need to be formed into and if you and if you didn't have these stressors what would form you know what i'm saying like what would push you to form into that diamond that you're really trying to be yeah you need it yeah it almost uh i, I kind of want to say that what jared was saying forcing you it's uh when when a bad things happen when a bad thing happens to you you feel fear right? Regardless of who you are. I don't care if it's you. I don't care if it's me. I don't care if it's anyone. You feel fear. It is a natural instinct. But I'm going to be a little bit corny and play off of it. Uh, when you feel fear, is it face everything and run or face everything and rise? And that kind of goes back to our first thing was, do we have the, you know, the, the, the free will? You have, you have the decision. When something tragic happens, face everything and run or fear everything and rise. I mean, and, I, and so to be even more cornier, <laughs> I, feel <laughs> as though, I feel as though Will Smith said that perfectly in After Earth. You know what I'm saying? Fear is a product of your mind of what you mm -hmm. create. You know what I'm saying? It cannot harm you. Now, danger, danger is very real. Danger is a tangible thing that can affect your health and your well-being. But fear is a state of mind. You know what I'm saying? Like, beautiful things are on the other side of fear. Yeah. You know? I mean, but typically once we hit that threshold of fear, you know, that unknown, we kind of back the hell off. You know? And but honestly, it's when you power through that, you punch through that wall, that's when you start to see great things. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Hey, I mean, unless y'all got anything else, I mean, I feel like that's a good spot to just wrap yeah. it up. 
Well, because then now it's a segue of our next videos, right? Or future, yeah. like the ones that I, because he brought up fear and I'm like, ah, you know, the, the first video I'm doing later this week, fear or love has a lot to do with it. So uh, I'm going to spill all my tea. Yeah. <laughs> 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 all right, so we're going to wrap it up. I mean, yeah, that was the first episode. We don't have a name for these segments yet. I mean, <laughs> us getting on here and we just pretty much talking about these 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 topics. I think the name of the segment should be Three Jacks from Different Sex. No. <laughs> Why not? Thought, Wait I for that. Was, I was thinking of something right like, like 30, 40 minutes ago. I was thinking Three Kings. No, that was already the name of a movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This might just be the God cast, you know? I mean. God cast, yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. But yeah. I mean, if you got any, if you got any suggestions, hey, drop it in the comments. If y'all got any suggestions on future topics y'all want us to cover, be sure to drop it. I mean, I'll pretty much get with them and see if we want to touch on it. But um, yeah, we open to whatever y'all want, man. Like whatever y'all want to talk about, we are open. Like clearly, you see, we can run with any topic. I mean, mm-hmm. like give us a baton and we'll run with it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Share this video. Put it out there on all your social media platforms. You know, spam these motherfuckers with it. No, but uh, if you feel like this video can help others or just open up people's horizon, be sure to share it. Subscribe for more. And uh, until next time, we're out. Peace. Stand tall on your feet. Later, make up the difference. Toss and turn in your sleep. Family, I know you miss it. Shift and rock from the streets. Starting to get the picture. Fight for your life and feet. Watch how you turn out winning.